Staffordshire, a county rich in heritage and tradition where countryside and moorland, small towns and big cities, industry and farmland come together to create a fascinating, diverse county right at the heart of England. Our film will look at the food and drink produced and sold across Staffordshire. Some of it's unique, some of it's won awards, some of it has even been tasted by the Queen and some of it's an integral part of the heritage of this sprawling county. But there's a fascinating story to be told and some fascinating characters to meet. And one thing's for sure, it's right tasty. So join us then as we set out to discover a flavour of Staffordshire. Well, the, the county of Staffordshire can actually offer amazing food and with, that's produced with quality, integrity, and people know where it's come from. They've got a nice environment to live in, and uh, the people are just dead friendly. So, you know, what more can you ask for? We need, need the oat cake and the potteries. It's one of the few things left here, isn't it, now? I mean, the pottery's all disappeared. There aren't much Daltons and Wedgwoods, they've all seem to be whittling away. So we, we, need, we need the oat cake. You've got to have two things. You've got to have the product that people want to buy, and you've got to have the people to buy it. And we're fortunate in this part of the country that we've actually got both. We can produce a quality product and a, and a big range of different crops and uh, uh, foods. And we've got a large population on our doorstep that are enthusiastic enough that they'll come out to our farm to buy it. We have got a huge um, uh, client clientele you know, on the doorstep and that South Staffordshire now is a major tourist venue with all the other things that are here. So people are being pulled in from all over the world to this, uh, to this area. We're so lucky in Staffordshire. There's such a wide variety of producers here um, that are all local on our doorstep. You know, we've got rapeseed oil, we've got beer, uh, we've got wine, we've got ice cream. And so we're just so lucky that as a county we are so diverse. What we wanted to do was produce local beer for local people. And um, what's changed is that people now appreciate local produce much more than they did even five years ago. So people are now connecting with their local brewer, with their local food supplier, and we're, uh, we're really <clears throat> riding on the back of that. We've travelled across the county, meeting the people behind some of the delicious delicacies on offer in Staffordshire. You can follow our progress on this map. So what better place to start than right at the southernmost tip of Staffordshire on one of the county's best kept secrets? Staffordshire is world famous for its brewing history, and we'll come to that later. But sadly, man cannot survive on beer alone, so there's wine as well. Hello, I'm Martin Vickers, and welcome to Hapney Green Vineyards, and I'd uh, like to show you around today. Here we are in the vineyards, and you can see uh, we've got a lovely crop on this year, even though it's not been a a very good summer um, and there's a lot of work gone into uh, in, into the vineyards in England particularly in, in this part of the world in Staffordshire because of the of the climate although we've got uh, early ripening varieties these all these shoots have been tucked in we've been trimming we've been deleafing by hand so we can get uh, what limited amount of sunlight we've got in on the, on the, the grapes to get them fully ripened and to ripen the wood as well for next year but of course we grow green grapes as well um, we make white white red and rosé and spark and uh, we'll have a look at some of the green grapes as well. So these, as you can see, is a, a, a white variety and they're just uh, bunches fattening up nicely. It'd probably be three to four weeks before we actually start harvest. This is a variety called Huxelreeb, which we use as a single variety, dry white wine, but it's also used in our medium blends as well. OK, so we'll go and have a look in the winery now and see what uh, the process is there. October is our main harvesting month and the grapes uh, first go into a de-stalker which uh, cleverly removes the berries from the stalks and lightly crushes them and then pumps the whole lot into the press itself. The press is what's replaced the traditional feet. Uh, it's actually a pneumatic press so there's a canvas bag inside here. So as the crop goes in, uh, the doors go on, it holds about two and a half tonnes of crop uh, and then as the drum rotates 
the canvas bag inflates inside pneumatically and very gently squeezes the grapes to the outside of the drum. So we get all the juice out without actually cracking any pips or, or bits of stalk, which would, of course, completely ruin the wine. So the juice from the press is coming into these vats to ferment. Uh, takes around about six weeks, nice, long, slow, cool fermentation. And then early spring uh, will be racking and filtering uh, the wines. That's uh, white, red and rosé. Um, automatic filler on the end there. Um, we only use new bottles. Um, screw cap machine, so we've got the option, screw cap or cork, cork and cap there. And then an automatic labeler, which is uh, saves us a lot of work. Um, and there's a the finished article. Just up the road from Hapney Green Vineyard is Litchfield. It's the birthplace of Samuel Johnson and home to a fantastic 12th century cathedral. And some 250 metres beneath this old and distinguished town, there's water. In fact, there's lots of water. Some 7 million litres per day is produced and bottled at source by Chase Spring Water. We've got Elmhurst Spring, which is directly behind us, a few hundred metres. We've got um, a mineral water source there and a spring water source. We also have Maple Brook, which is a mile or two down the road. Um, very similar um, water source. Um, the analysis on that, um, you know, within that water is nearly identical to the two boreholes we have here. Chase Spring Water can produce up to 12,000 bottles of water an hour at their plant near Litchfield. But Staffordshire has provided more than just the water itself. Staffordshire is crucial to their brand. What we were looking for was to try and find something within the Staffordshire, you know, sort of community to, that would be recognisable uh, by most people within this uh, sort of area. So um, Cannock Chase being so beautiful and, you know, not too many miles down the road from ourselves, and we uh, decided that was quite a good idea. Local produce is on sale across Staffordshire and farm shops are dotted around the county selling homegrown and locally produced food and drink. Amerton Farm and Essington Fruit Farm in South Staffordshire are visited by thousands of shoppers every year keen to sample locally sourced Staffordshire produce. My family moved to Essington in 1892, uh, having farmed for centuries in Ecclesall and my great grandfather could be said that he started the retail business because he started a retail milk round in 1892. I and my wife started the fruit farm in 1978, so we started with three acres of strawberries in 1978, uh, and it's grown from that really until now. We farm about 50 acres. Uh, you can see we've got quite a large farm shop. We do our own meat. We've got free, our own free-range pork. So over the past 30 years, it's developed into something quite, quite a lot more substantial than we anticipated we can produce a quality product and a, and a big range of different crops and uh, uh, foods and we've got a large population on our doorstep that are enthusiastic enough that they'll come out to our farm to buy it. <laughs> 